All right, welcome back everybody. So today I'm going to be showing you the quickest and easiest method to set up audio ducking in DaVinci Resolve. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. All right, so for those of you that are new to video editing and may not know what audio ducking is, it's basically a way to turn down the volume of one track by linking it to another. And if this doesn't make sense to you right now, just bear with me. It's all going to make sense in about two to three minutes. So as you can see, I've got two audio tracks in here. I deleted all the video because frankly, it doesn't matter for our purposes. The one on uh, audio track three is a song and the one on audio track two is my vocals from last week. I just threw them in here. So if we play it back from here, now keep in mind, I did not adjust any volume. So this is exactly how the song came and exactly how the audio track was recorded. So if I play this back, what you're going to hear is that the vocal track just gets absolutely buried inside the music. So these are the settings that I used for my video. So pretty much you can't understand a word that I'm saying. Now what we could do is turn this down. We could go and volume automate it. Or if we wanted to do a quicker way, we could use audio ducking. So let's go into Fairlight. We're going to be working with the vocal first. So in this case, because it's the vocal that I used from last week, I already have some effects on here. Doesn't really matter if they're on or off. All that matters is that we double click over on the right side here under the dynamics. And it's going to open up this, which is basically a gate compression expander. So there's a lot of useful tools in here if you didn't know that this existed, but today we're only going to be using the compressor. So this is going to go on the spoken word track. And what we're going to do is under the side chain, click send. So what this is going to do at this point is basically anytime there's something happening on the uh, voiceover track, it's going to send a signal to another track that, hey, something is happening, the volume is above zero, you should pay attention. So, now that we have that set up, we're going to find, in this case, the music track, which is audio track three, and double click on the dynamics again, and set up the side chain to listen. And we're gonna have to turn on the compressor, just make sure to actually hit the words compressor, you'll know it's on if, in the window here, you'll see you know, the line is actually appearing there. So now what we've done is basically made it so that the audio track is listening for every time that something is happening on the vocal track. And this is exactly what we want to happen. Now to make the volume actually go down automatically, we're going to be adjusting the threshold and ratio. Now coming from an audio engineering background, I hear a lot of video editors getting this horribly wrong. What they're saying is that the threshold is adjusting the volume reduction when that's not actually the case. The ratio is the one that's adjusting the volume reduction. So the threshold is basically going to be at what point the compressor kicks in to actually start reducing the volume. By turning this down to a, a lower decibel level, it means that it's going to engage earlier, but that's not actually directly turning down the volume. The ratio here is what is actually turning down the volume. And if we start adjusting this, we can see it's going to have a steeper or narrower slope on the curve here. And if we set this to as shallow of a curve as possible. So in this case, 1.2 to 1, it's going to have barely any volume reduction. Meanwhile, if we set this to 20 to 1, it's going to have a massive amount of reduction. So what I found is that in most instances, if you set it to around 3 to 1, you're going to get a pretty good volume reduction without actually compressing it a massive amount. So if we play this back at this point, I'll just set this back up somewhere around minus 34. All right, so these are the settings that I used for. 
you can hear that the moment that I started talking, the music was turned down. And this is exactly what we want. However, there's a couple more settings that we need to adjust. The attack is basically going to be how quickly it reacts. So in this case, it's set to uh, 1.4 milliseconds, and you can actually hear that. It takes a tiny bit of time for it to actually kick in. That's not what we want for spoken word. So set this as low as it can possibly go. The hold time is how long it's going to clamp down on that vocal reduction before it actually lets go and lets the volume go back up to its normal level on the song. So for spoken word, if you have a lot of gaps in between phrases like I do here, if I zoom in and just move this off, you'll see all of these gaps. We basically have to make sure that all of these are filled in, otherwise the song volume is going to jump right back up. So in this instance, just through some of my own testing, I found that if I set it to around three to four seconds, which is basically almost all the way up, then it works for me. And then the release time, we don't have to worry too much about, but typically set it to around 150 milliseconds or so. That's just going to work for pretty much all applications. So going back to the threshold then, if I play this back, while the audio ducking is happening, you're going to see where a lot of the confusion comes in, where a lot of these video editors believe that the threshold is the one that adjusts the volume. And let me just show you what happens when I play it back while adjusting the threshold. All right, so these are the settings that I used for my video. I wanted to have a really subtle animation and because the logo is so tiny, I had to turn the overall strength essentially all the way down. So you can see that, yes, if I do turn it up, then the volume is going to be higher. And if I turn it down, the volume is going to be lower. But again, that's because that's the point at which it actually kicks in. So if you set this to kick in at an earlier decibel count, then everything above that curve is going to be reduced by that massive amount. Whereas if we turn it up and it only kicks in at minus 15 decibels, then there's only a really small amount of reduction happening. And this is going to be a little bit of a balancing act between the level of your vocal and the level of the uh, song and the amount of compression that you want to induce because it is going to induce some compression into the background music. There's just no way around it. That's how this works. Man, you're not supposed to be there. Sorry about that, cats being a problem. Anyway, so yeah, it is going to be a balancing act because the higher you turn up the ratio, the more compression it's going to induce and the more flat everything is going to sound in terms of your background music. And if you set it to a fairly conservative compression amount, anywhere from you know the lowest amount DaVinci Resolve's compressor will go is 1.2 to 1. Even if you go up to four or five to one, it's still going to be good enough for a background uh, music reduction in volume because you're not really going to hear all that much compression and your audience isn't really going to be hearing it anyway. The volume is going to be low. It's not the main focus. So feel free to go again, four or five to one. You're not really going to hear it, but anything above that and you might actually start hearing a lot of that compression and that artifacting that's going to happen once you start doing something like this. So it is a balancing act between the ratio and the threshold and just make sure you find that nice sweet spot of the two and for me I found that it was usually somewhere in the minus 35 range for the threshold and the minus three or so for the ratio. And of course you can use this in tandem with something like volume automation which I've done a video on previously. If you wanted to do something even more precise then definitely use those two in combination. And if this video was helpful at all let me know in the comment section below as well as letting me know what you'd like to see in future episodes. I want to create content that you want to see so let me know what it is that you want to see. And until next time I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye now.